past president. I guess. I see um Miss Kezaya, Liba, Mariam Tukur, NSA, Ovosa, Sochi, Tega, Tega, Tega. I, I greet you. My oh. able VP, Yakini Kola Wale, Zainab, Adam, Afoke, Omnia, Boss, and DeWard Smith. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for, for joining us. Thank you. So let me go to the um to the chat room. I see um Yekini is logging in from Lagos. Princess Udrak from Dubai. Abimbola from Abuja. Aisha too from Kano. Wow, how are you? Miriam Jikamshi from Abuja. We have um okay, what's um Sec Africa, please. We would like to enjoin all of us to share the webinar link with loved ones. You know, this session is free, so everyone is free to come in. Zainab Adam yeah. is logging in from Kano and Kola Taiwo from Lagos. Let us know where you're logging in from, ladies and gentlemen. NSA from Scotland. Oh, wow. Good to have you. Good evening or good afternoon or good morning. I don't know what it is over there in Scotland. All right. So let's know where you're logging in from. Let us know where you are logging in from. How has our week been? Thank God it's Friday. Please, if your mic is on, kindly mute it. Patience, that with me. Kindly mute your mic. Kindly mute your mic. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me see the chat room again. We have um, Kezaya logging in from Borunu. And uh, Liba from Abuja, good evening to you. Dr. Messi Bello Abu is from Pitakwa, a.k.a. Port Harcourt. <laughs> oh, wow. How is Port Harcourt today? Have you been really over there? Good evening, everyone. I'm glad to be here. I'm so glad to be here. We have the, the room is filling up. Yes, we are 23 now. Mary Gloria is joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Yes. All right. Miss Patience Zalami, please can you mute your mic? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll soon hit the ground running. Our first speaker, I am very sure, is ready for us. After him, we are having Tega. And then after Tega, would have um let me see now. Hold on a minute. After Tega would we'll have Miss Nancy Okoro Dudu. All right. Okay. So we are seven minutes past four. And um, this is another for everyone for those who are coming in to come in. And as you come in, please let us know where you're joining us from. I'm joining us from Abuja. Please put in the chat room where you are joining us from. Thank you everyone for joining us so far. We are waiting for the rest of us. This is 7.05. I want to believe we can hit the ground running in the next three to five minutes. Nkechi is joining us from Abuja. Hello, ma'am. Good evening. Thank you for joining. How has your day and week been? Wow, wow, wow. Ramatu Ibrahim is coming in. Okay. So I see like two or three people have just joined us. Please, as you join, let us know where you are joining us from. What part of the world are you joining us from? Okay, Nkechi is saying, good evening, Madam President. It's been an exhausting but fulfilling week. You can say that again. All the doors that blew in Nyanya today blew on top of me. I'm just coming in from work and it has been one, one beautiful day in shorts. Okay, the wordsmith is joining from Abuja. Welcome, Mary Gloria is joining from Enugu. Well done, how is Enugu today? Has it started raining over there? I understand it rained in Abuja two nights ago, but I was too fast asleep to even notice. Okay, so the link has been shared again. Please note that this, this session is completely free. 
So we can share the link with our contacts, put it on your status right now or anywhere in your sphere of influence. Let them join us because we are going to be having a very robust conversation this evening. Okay, Mary Gloria said the rain here two nights ago. Oh, wow. So I guess the rains are coming in early in 2024. Oh, yes. Thank you so much, the wordsmith. Oh, <laughs> the dust smells good. I can imagine. Okay, our lucky Tom Wellington is joining from Lagos. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. We will soon hit the ground running in three minutes. We will have Mr. Uriagwa on the floor taking us for the next 45 minutes. Okay, so I ask again, how has our week been for those who are just joining us? I'm hoping it will rain tonight so we can have a good night's sleep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, welcome to the February edition of our Pan-African webinar. Okay. Stella, I don't know if we have the agenda. Can you share it on the group? Share it in the, in the chat room, even though I have it here. Can, sh can you share it in the chat room so everybody knows what um, we're doing tonight? Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'm so glad. I'm so, so glad to be here. Please know that this session continues tomorrow from 9.45 a.m. to 2.05 p.m. So whatever you're doing tomorrow, kindly clear your calendar so you'll be part of it tomorrow. And tonight we're, we have started by 7 and we're done by 9.50. But I promise you it will not be boring. So tighten your seatbelts. It is 7.08 p.m. We hit the ground running by 7.10 with Mr. Abdul Rahim Oreagwa. So let us be mindful of that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Let me check if anyone has joined us. Okay, I have, I have some people in the chat room telling me something. Let me see. Okay, okay, all righty. Okay, I'd like to get off from Lagos, Ramatu from Kaduna. Good evening, madam. Thank you so much for joining us, Abdullahi from Kaduna. Okay, yes, thank you for putting up um, the agenda for tonight. Abdullahi Bello is saying it's not the sleep is the waking up in Nigeria that is a challenge. <laughs> it is well with us all in this nation, I believe, yes. Okay, 709, so let's get ready. Mr. Urebo, are you ready for us? Are you ready? We're 31 here, it's a good number. Let me admit some more people. Okay. Let's make it 100. <laughs> They will get to 100, but we need to keep the time. But I'm sure you're ready. This is 7.10. Let's give us one more minute. Let's see who else is coming in. Let's give us one more minute. Someone just came in now, please, sir or madam. Samira from the FCT. Samira Miko from the FCT. Welcome. If there's any new person just joining us, kindly let us know where you're logging in from. We have people from different continents. There's someone from um, Scotland. Yes. And a lot of us from here in Nigeria. I'm hoping that some people from another African country can join us or anywhere else in the world. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so, so much. I'm scrolling to see if there's anyone I've not um, captured. Please remember to share the YouTube link. It has been shared in the chat room. Share it oh, far and wide of your YouTube social media handles or wherever you have influence or wherever you are because this session is free. So kindly share the link. It's 7-Eleven now. Mr. Oreaba, you have 30 seconds. Oh, 
You ready? Yeah, ready? You ready? Please mute your mic. Two people are waiting in the chat room. Please mute your mic so that we have no interruptions whatsoever. Okay. We have two people coming in. Let's let's get them in. Aisha to Badmos is coming in. Okay. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just joining us, please, can we know where you are joining us from? Please put it in the chat room. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And please note that the agenda is in the chat room as well. So you can um, be abreast with how we're going to be flowing tonight. Okay, 7.12. Mr. Oriagwa, you have the floor. Are you here? Yes, I am. Okay. I mean, I can't hear any lights closer, sorry. Hello? You have the floor, sir. Okay. I thought so was an introduction or something coming up first. Okay, yes. Hold on. Uh, okay. I would like to... Yes, yes, yes. I'm so sorry for that. I would like us to pay attention while I read the profile of our first speaker. Okay. Our first speaker is Mr. Abdul Rahim Oriagwa. He is 100% made in Nigeria like that. He's passionate about transforming and inspiring lives positively. He works with the slogan, if only you believe everything is possible. He is an integrative life coach, business and communication consultant, a public speaker and distinguished toastmaster. He has worked within the telecom space in Nigeria for over two decades. He is a marketing, sales, branding and business development professional and a certified national business development service provider. He is also the fellow of the Institute of Management Consultants and Development Professional. He is an alumni of University of Washington Global Health with memberships in a number of international and national organizations. His interests include human behavior, people relationship and mentorship. He is a convener of a premium book club, intellectual tussle, and the exclusive mentorship program, TEMP TEM, and sits on the board of a few Nigerian companies and supports courses that promote Nigeria positively, mind development and human interactions. He, he has also trained in project management, EFT, TFT, matrix reimprinting, NLP, self-mastery, and also one of the pioneer members of the advanced coaching program from Alka Academy. He loves to help people, he loves to laugh, and is happily married. He is the Ra. Think to transform. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's give it up for our first speaker, Mr. Abdul Rahim Oreaba. Well, thank you very much. Where are the claps? Come on, I like the claps. You can clap. It's all right. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> Welcome aboard, sir. Welcome aboard. Hello, before, hello, hello. Yeah, before you go ahead, we have Miriam Abdulaziz joining us from Abuja. Yes, I see Seca Africa clapping. Can the rest of us clap, please? Thank you so much, sir. You have the floor. It's exactly 7.15 and you have 45 minutes. Oh, well, interesting. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you so much. The grandma queen herself. Yes, sir. But I'm president. You know, when the president introduces you, there's a lot that's expected, right? And now that she has done that, question now comes as to what do I do, right? Do I speak? Do I just look around? Do I check in the chat room? Or do I do a presentation? Anyways, what are we talking about today? It's nothing very serious. And it's also something quite serious. The difference is what I used to, what I expected. Just in a few, we'll make use of the chat room a little bit. So just tell me the chat room, what are you expecting today? What are you expecting from me today? What are you expecting? Let's see. 
Wild guesses. Let's see the one that comes close. What are you expecting today? Let's in chat room. So that way I know those that are with us or those that are in the kitchen or those that are in the bathroom or those that are in the room. Let's know. And let's see. What are you expecting today? New horizons, new things to be learned. Thank you. Um, President, who else? You know what about the chat room? The chat room usually exposes those that are actually here. Right, <laughs> so Russ is expecting you to dazzle as usual. Wow, thank you very much. I think that's very highly mind blowing nuggets, mind blowing nuggets, a lot to learn, transforming notions as per sec Africa, shifting of paradigms. Fantastic! I like that. I like that. I want to say value, cognitive stimulant. Interesting, this is deep. All right, who else? Ralph says, okay, cognitive stimulants. Let's see who else. We have 30, about 40 people in the room, and we have uh, less than 10 people that have responded. I told you the chat knows how to expose people, right? <laughs> Value addition to knowledge from a Toastmaster. <laughs> I expect a wow presentation. New learning experiences. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. Let's see who else. To learn and unlearn from your kidney. Fantastic. This is good. Kola says, Kola Tava says, value addition to knowledge. This is brilliant. So, today we'll be talking about a few things, right? But before we start, I'd like to find out from you. Okay? And we're talking about things that border on the mind, how we think. So, you got it right. I love all you said come together, you know. We're talking about ourselves, who we are, what we do, you know, why we do the things we do. And see, at the same time, the kind of outcomes we get. When I, was when I was trying to prepare this speech, I was thinking about the best presentation. I went through the general presentations, what is usually expected, what you usually give, tell people how to live, you know, time management, learning, business and all. And I thought about it again that, if I go through our routes, then we're going through the general everyday routes. So what are the routes do we use? And I leveraged on the exclusive mentorship program, one that I run, that I'm a convener for, and I said, let's bring that to life, right? And what we'll be talking about, basically, has to do with the person, who we are, why we are, why we do what we do, and the capacity of the mind. So let's come back to the basics, right? And that comes back to who are you? I always start, all right, I like to start with this question, you know, and it tells a lot about we as human beings. Can we tolerate ourselves, right? Do you know who you are? Do you know why you do what you do? So that being said, I'm going to ask a quick question. In the, in the chat room, in the chat room, Tell me, who are you? In the chat room, who are you? If you have to define yourself, how do you define yourself? Who are you? One sentence. I'm hearing stop. Fili, what is he doing there? You're saying stop. <laughs> okay. So let's see. In the chat room, let's hear it. Who are you? Still finding out, questioning my labels. Thank you. I like that. I like that. That's from Ikechi. Questioning her labels. Still finding out. Who are you? This is a very interesting question. Because what we try, what we should look at is when you ask this question, most people say, I am Mr. I am Doctor. I am the engineer. But who are you? Princess Udua says, I'm a princess. I am Princess Udua, the, the indomitable, passionate, quintessential woman. I like that. Fantastic. Who else? Let's see. We are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. Just stay with me. Stay with me on this. Okay. Can you kindly speak a little louder? Okay, from a lucky tongue. 
Let's see. Let me increase the volume here. Am I? Is it better? Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Thumbs up. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. That's good. So that being said, okay, brilliant. I'll go straight to part of the presentation and let's see. But before we start, just to be very sure that I'm not alone, can we just put on our cameras? Let me just see faces, just to be sure that I'm not talking to myself. You know, Zoom has a way of making you feel lonely. So let me just be sure that I'm not lonely. Oh, thank you. The grammar queen is there. Okay, I see South Africa, brilliant. The wordsmith, Isaiah, Raphael, thank you so much. So we can see those that are here. Hey, thank God for the video and this chat room. You can, like I said, it exposes a lot. I'll teach. Thank you. I can see you there. Fantastic. So let's get back into it. Now that I have seen those that are in class, the remaining 40 people, 35 people, as they say, we know where you live. <laughs> so let's come back here. I run through a presentation quite quickly. So I have to level 45. I have a little video that I'm going to show you. So let's see, is it visible? Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, it's, yes we can. Okay, brilliant, okay. Yes. So we go straight into, it. it's a simple exercise. You just asked, who are you today, all right? The second exercise I just want us to ask is this, what does 40 years on look like for you? This is 2024. 2064, where do you see yourself? 2064, where do you see yourself? One thing we always look at is, we always look at, oh, my career, I'm a doctor. I need to pursue my career. I'm an engineer. In the next years, I'm going to go to Harvard. I need to do some certificate courses. I need to work in the best organizations, I need to sort out some consultancy, it come back again. I am a nurse. What's the future like? What does it hold for me? I am a teacher. What does the future have for me? What impact am I going to give? What kind of people am I going to meet? How do I want my children to be like? You know, and you keep going on and on and on. And by the time you do it all, you just realize that you're in one direction. One simple direction. And what does that direction say? One simple thing. All right. And I'll ask if in 25, in 40 years, what you're looking at is your career, what happens to the other aspects of your life? What makes you whole? What makes you complete? What makes you an individual? And that's why I asked the first question, who are you? Who are you today? All right. So I'd like everybody to just write somewhere who you are today. Just write somewhere and just put it there. I'll give you two minutes. I'll give you two minutes. Good. And the second part, what does 40 years look like for you? I'll give you another two minutes, another one minute this time around. Why are you writing it there? Samira says, I'm a learner, student of knowledge. Dr. Mercy says, I am Mercy Bilo Abu, the enigma. I like that. Fuluke says, I am Fuluke Abudu. The grammar queen says she's a billionaire philanthropist. Abimbola says, happy, jolly grandma. Lovely, lo loving that. And Yakini says, I'm a passionate quality health, safety, and environmental professional today. And Mariah says, looks good. Life begins at 40. Brilliant. The essence of this is very, very simple, right? By the time you look at the end, that instantly tells you where you are today. Are you going closer to where you need to be? Are you doing the things you need to do? So let's, we just had the results in the chat room. Steve Covey says in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, 
is I begin with the end in mind. When we start projects, do we begin with the end in mind? I like using the example of the architect when he wants to build a house. He first builds a prototype. So he sees exactly what he's going to build. So by the time he moves to site, he knows exactly what he's going to build. So by the time it comes out, the prototype and the actual structure My network. I think, I think it's from them. I think it's from his end because I yes. can hear. Yeah. So let's just give him some time. Identical. So you are seeing. Back. Hello, sir. Okay, yeah, okay I went off for a bit. Okay. Okay, okay, you're back. Okay, that's good. Yeah, thank you. So would you be where you're supposed to be? So you begin with the end in mind, you check it. All right. Are you living the life of the prototype you have created? Have you seen 40 years down the line? Are you actually living the life you want to live? So that we don't start today and just, you know. Read my rule through the life. And when we get to the end, you know, say, this is what they did to me. When Nigeria, as they say, your village people are following you. They are not following you. You didn't follow yourself. And let me drop this for you, right? Let's get it very, very clear. At the end of your time, the first thing that will be stripped away from you is your name. The first thing that will be stripped away from you is your name. Yes. I won't be called Abdurrahim or Riyadh, but no. They don't say he's a business consultant or an integrative life coach. No way. They say bring his body. He used to live there. He was a nice guy, if I was. Of course I am. You know, put his body there. They will not say bring Rahim here. No. They will not say bring Mr. Riyagba here. No. They will not say bring doctor's body here. No. I've turned to eat instantly. Eat is what I've turned to. Put it there. I don't have a gender. So the next time you sit down and you're holding your body upright, remember, it's just the body that is there. The soul will go. Once you're gone, what do you live for? How would you be remembered? What impact have you left behind? And that's why that 40 year period is critical for me, right? So let's go back to this. We usually say we are nice people, <laughs> all right? If I ask you, by show of hands in the chat room, just, just show your hands. If you're a nice person, you're a very good person, just wave, put an emoji or something. Just drop it in the chat room. You know, you're patient. You're nice, you're good, just say, any emoji will work, all right? Okay, is my slide showing? Sorry. No, it's my slide no is off. It's not showing. Okay, it can be that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So we had the results. So I'm going to ask everybody, put in the chat room. I want to see emojis, whatever it is. Oh, I saw the nice people here, lovely. Just emojis, smiles, everything. So let's test it, okay? We're all nice people, we're all good. Still love funny, fun loving people, right? So let's go. Let's test something here and see. Ask yourself this one question. Can you tolerate yourself? If you can tolerate yourself, say yes. Just type yes, 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 yes. If you can tolerate yourself, type yes. That's all. Yes, yes, I can tolerate myself. Type yes, 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 I can tolerate myself. Can I do that? Wow, I see the chat room burning up. Everybody can tolerate themselves. That's really nice. So that means you can tolerate others. You have a big heart. 
you know. And once you can tolerate yourself, you can conquer the world. All right? Oh, the chat room is really burning up. Oh, yes, everybody. Aisha, too, Ramat, now Kuz. I love myself. I teach. Oh, my God. Everybody can. I have a good idea. You know what? Let's put it. Let's just put it to the test. Okay? Let's test it. Okay, let's try it out. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. Let's see. Let's see we're working. Let's see we're working together. For five to ten minutes, empty your mind. I'm going to time you just for five minutes. Sit down where you are. Comfortable position. If you prefer, close your eyes. If you want to sit down, just don't think of anything. Just relax. Just calm down. Let's start three minutes. And your time starts now. Just relax. Don't think about anything. All right? Just close your eyes to help yourself. Probably just concentrate on your breath, on your breath rather. Concentrate on your breathing and just see. Time has started. You have 30 seconds in. It may be tough, but just try, persevere. Don't think about anything. Just empty your mind. Can focus on your breath, that can help. Just relax and breathe. You've had a full day today. This is your time to just relax. All the muscles in your body, relax them. Your shoulders, your hands, just relax and breathe. Yes. Okay, your time is up. You can come back. If that was a little bit challenging for you, type one in the chat room. Just come back. If it was challenging for you to just close your eyes and not think about anything, type one in the chat room. Just one. Just type one. If that was tough. see so so trying to some people are trying to okay let's see one it was hard right it was difficult one i can see a lot of ones coming in so imagine if just to take three minutes of your time to rest relax and find time for yourself and the same you wants to help others you seem nice person how do you do that when you're not nice to yourself all day, the only time you find time to rest is when you sleep. And today, you just try to find time for yourself, and that was a little bit difficult, right? And that is who we are as human beings. So when you say who you are, you know, or who am I? Have you really thought about that? Have you really thought about that sentence? Have you thought about who you are? Yes. Why you are here? Why you do what you do? Why you think the way you think? I really thought about it. And for me, this guy always brings it to the center back for me by Thomas Cooley. 
where he says that I am not who I think I am. I am not who I think I am. I am who I think you think I am. Let that sink in again. I am not who you think I am. I am not who I think I am. I am who I think you think I am. Anytime I hear these quotes, it tells me a lot about the human behavior. How we don't live for ourselves, how we don't live for, or rather, we live for other people. We live to satisfy the next person. And the only reason why we live that way is because you have not found your true self. So this whole seminar, this whole presentation, is it coming back to you? At the end of the day, how would you value your life? Were you nice? You thought you were nice? Do you live a full life? What's your legacy? Did you regard the next person? Did you lord your opinions over others? Did you think everybody thinks thinks the way you think? Do you feel that whatever you do, everybody should be tolerant of you, right? Or are you tolerant of other people when they make their mistakes? So when you think about this deeply, it takes you to a different level. And that comes back to where the thoughts come in. I had to just bring this in. You know, this is the point where we need to put some statistics to show that at least, you know, there's some knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> also into it. And when you look at this, what does it tell you? The memory capacity of the brain is around 2.5 million gigabytes. If your brain has 2.5 million gigabytes of space, what are you thinking? What are you really doing? Are you feeding yourself with a lot of distractions? Your devices, for example, 256 megabytes, 512 gigabytes, one terabyte and your brain has 2.5 million gigabytes when you are told that you don't use five percent of the capacity of your brain does that really make sense now does it really add up your device storage you cannot get enough you have a laptop you have an ipad you have the phone itself you have three phones and you've used up the memory your brain is 2.5 million gigabytes have you used it so you as a human being have you really thought about who you are do you think that you are limited to the labels? An engineer, an accountant, a doctor, a husband, a wife. Is that who you are? Then when you bring it out into the environment, the people that you relate with, who are they? How do they influence you? What are your values and your beliefs? How does that affect or... How does it come together to bring out the person you think you are? And I use my words very carefully when I say the person you think you are. Because when you go deep inside, you realize that you are way more than who you think you are. So now I'm asking, are we who, are we who we are? Right? Am I Abdurrahim or Akbar with the long profile? Integrative life coach, business consultant, public speaker. If you realize on the flyer, I do not put any of those titles. I just put the rod there. That's deliberate. Who am I? I'm not qualified by those things. At the end of the day, at the end of my days, it comes back to what has Rahim done that has impacted your life? What has Rahim done that has left an impression for you? What has Rahim done that will make you remember him? All right? And now let's hear what Ekatol says. Ekatol is a very, very, very known individual when it comes to the things of the mind i had to drop this here and it says the most decisive event in your life is when you discover you are not your thoughts right or emotions instead you can be present as the awareness behind the thoughts and emotions there's a book he has the power of now i recommend it to go and read it when you understand the power of now you realize that every moment you live right in the present determines what your future will be like and at the same time creates the value of the past but if you are thinking about the future and you don't live in the present you create a past that you're not aware of and you step into a future that's in oblivion and you keep worrying about tomorrow without enjoying what actually creates that tomorrow right so do use your capacity right do use it to its fullest and this is where i like to bring in about einstein right when you think about the capacity of your brain, which we mentioned, you have a lot of things going on, especially your imagination. Are you using it? 
And Albert Einstein says it when it's puts it beautifully as it says, imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles to. When you go back, when you go up 40 years in the future, right? Go back to when you were born and you were a child and nothing was on your mind. And your mind was very full and free. Right? Your mind was very free and empty. All you did was imagine and be whatever you wanted to be. Today, you spend your time worrying and you forget to believe it. Don't do that to yourself. We have a short clip by Dandapani, right? I'll see if we can quickly squeeze it in my time. I'll see if I can quickly squeeze it in. What Dandapani does, right? He's a very renowned monk. Left after his school, he went to be a monk for 15 years. His words are very deep. You can always check him out on YouTube. I'll get the video and play for, for you. But in the meantime, this is the octopus speaker's pool. They come in every month. This is the February edition, right? Organized by Seca Africa, by the octopus himself, Sam Obafemi, or should I say, in the future, <laughs> Dr. Sam Obafemi. Right. But who are we who we think we are? Who are we? Who are you? Who am I? Right. Let me get that clip if I still have time. But I'm president. Let's see. Do I have five minutes more or ten minutes more? You have two minutes. I have two minutes. Oh, my God. Okay. In that case, I think I'll just stop. Let me just do the first two minutes. What I'll do is I'll give you the first two minutes and then whatever is left of the time, we'll take it off from there. Okay, let's make it five. Five, okay. We'll just do the first five minutes. Mm, I think the first five up, minutes. So can... Yes, the first five minutes will, will do the justice for me. I'll give you five minutes. And that is him right there. Most people can't concentrate because they've never been taught how to concentrate and they don't practice it. So if we don't learn to concentrate and we don't practice it, well, obviously you can't practice something you haven't learned, then how can you be good at it? And what we practice all the time is distraction. So the more you practice distraction, the better you become at it. And people are masters at distraction. People think technology is distracting. You know, I've had so many people come up to me, hold their cell phones up to my face and go, these things are ruining our lives. And I go, no, these things are not ruining our life. This is a beautiful piece of technology. What's ruining your life is your inability to exercise discipline around the use of it. So the idea is that you use technology as opposed to technology uses you. In the same way, you know, if you look at your whole day, how do we integrate the practice of concentration throughout everything that we do? The one way I tell people to practice concentration is doing one thing at a time. So giving someone your undivided attention is a great way to practice concentration. Every time I speak with my wife, I give her my undivided attention. Are you a STEM professional and are looking to apply for U.S. permanent residency? Then if my awareness drifts away, I bring my awareness back to her and I stay focused on that conversation. The two things we need to understand, there's the mind and there's awareness. And you're not the mind, rather your pure awareness moving through different areas of the mind. So your mindness is moving through the mind. So when I'm speaking with my wife, if I'm getting distracted, it's my awareness is leaving her and it's moving to a different area of the mind. I might be thinking about a client or a contract I need to sign or a business opportunity. And then I bring my awareness back to her. We keep chatting for a minute and then my awareness drifts away again and I bring my awareness back. So I define concentration as my ability to keep my awareness on one thing for an extended period of time until I can consciously choose to move it to another thing. So if I'm speaking with you, I give you my undivided attention. I keep my awareness on you. Every time it drifts away, I bring it back. It drifts away, I bring it back and I train myself. And I think that's where, you know, people in today's world, I feel so many people are lazy and they want a quick fix because everything that's being sold to them is a quick fix. You know, you only need to do so many hours before you get certified as a yoga teacher. You can come to the weekend course to enlightenment. That's a one-week seminar to understand mind-body connection. I'm like, what BS? 
I gave up 10 years of my life learning this, and the way my teacher taught me was just like wax on, wax off, just one little thing at a time. A relentless practice. You First, you understand how it works. Then you learn how to practice. Well, I think my time has come in, so I think we just wanted to put that in quickly. So putting that in quickly, the whole idea is this. Learn to practice concentration. Find out who you are. Finish one thing at a time. And that wraps up who you are. Do you have five minutes a day for yourself? Have you thought about the end of your time? Have you thought about the value of your life? Have you thought about the value that you'll be adding? Have you thought about how you treat others without assumptions? And have you thought about the awareness of your mind or where you're carrying your energy, your kind of energy around you? So that being said, I want to drop this for everyone. Find time for yourself. Go deep to find out who you really are, why you do what you do. And our lives, our environments, our families will be better than we met it. So that being said, I'd like to call on Madam President, the Grandma Queen. Thank you. All right. And wow. I think I'm working within my awesome. time. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. <clears throat> Thank you so, so much. I do not know if we have any comments or questions. Are you, will you be with us till the end? I'd like for questions to be taken at the end so we can take the next person. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Okay, so just keep your comments and questions for Mr. Uriagwa till the end. Right now, we would be... Uh, the next person up is um, Tega, uh, Abel VP. Tega, are you ready? Are you here? Incantation, please. Hello? Hello? Can you, can you, can you all hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. we can. Yes, yes, we can. Okay, so yes, I'll say too. that the next person we have up is Tega, but we have a break till um oh wait, wait a minute. Mr. Rawa actually has up to 8 p.m. Ah. Oh. Have we? 45 minutes is still 8 p.m. Okay, so we can take his questions now. If you have any question or comments for him, please keep the ground running. Can we take questions from Mr. Oreagwa while um, Tega gets her act together? Tega, please stand by. Did they hear me? Okay, Hello? I see a question in the chat room that says that what's the name of the book by Eckhart Tolle? His book is called The Power of Now. The Power of the Now. Power of Now, yes, that's it. Okay. Okay, any other question or comment? Yes, I think there's a hand up. Okay, Ralph for Bafemi, please, you have the floor. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic one there. Dira, thank you so much. So pleasant to listen in. Um, I've had this thought several times, and I thought, you know, let me just drop it here. Um, there have been this conflict, internal conflict, I mean, way back, right, not today. And... This is a good forum to throw it in and, you know, just hear what you think about this. The conflict is this. When you have certain capacities that you manifest in different ways, and then you're struggling with the definition of who you are, I'm afraid it sounds like that question attempts to box one into a specific way of defining oneself 
right so when i hear who are you for example it, it, it i don't know maybe it is me but it, it's a question that attempts in itself to force oneself to narrow down define I, I love that word i saw in the chat like label and stick to a box of a description right now i choose to see who i am as an evolving person and i i, I it's my line of thoughts and i'd like to drop it here what do you think about the definition of who we are as how we evolve part time right as our, a, 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 an embodiment of our emotions, our being, our environment, and our manifestations as it evolves. So that we're not tied to um, this person, and then, you know the risk? I've said I'm this person, so I have to remain this person because I have said it. Even when I'm not feeling it, I'm not connected with it, but I said I am this person, so I have to be this person. Uh, let me not say too much, but if you got the question right what do you think and everyone like about that multiple personality because we okay. feel guilty people feel guilty about being multi personalities what do you think about that oh thank you very much Ra, for that powerful question and it's one question that everybody should actually work with and that was also part of the reasons why i brought up the topic why i decided to speak on the topic right I have this program that I run. It's called the Exclusive Mentorship Program, TEMP. All right. This is one of the major areas to focus on. I had a lot of people that have met me in the past for mentorship and guidance and direction. And the major question is, who am I? You know, what can I do? What is my purpose? What am I passionate about? And when you realize the essence of the question, you realize that people are different. A good example I could be talking to you right now, right? We will be talking, you know, laughing, getting in the heat of the vibe, and then your wife calls. And the next thing you say is, hello, darling, how are you? How are you doing? What's going on in the house? Instantly, you've changed who you were to suit the personality that she is expecting. What that simply means is, as an individual, by the time you label yourself as I am, al haji so that people will respect me i am the wisest one so that people will respect me or label yourself because of society based on profession or based on background or i'm a yoruba man i'm a hausa man based on background that is where you have now put external labels on who you are but when you now come back to the essence of who you are strip yourself of your name strip yourself of your environment Strip yourself of the labels. Strip yourself of the work you are doing. And that comes back to it at the end of your life. How do you want to be remembered? That is when it starts making, it starts coming together. You know, in present day, you say that, what's your avatar? Especially when you go deep into it. They say, what's your avatar? Some people are quite are quiet. They live a humble life. But once they get on the stage, Supposing to speak like a public speaker, for example, a different personality takes over, right? Or a boxer, you see Anthony Joshua, for example. When you see him, he's a lovely, happy, go fellow, interesting fellow. But when he gets into the ring, he's a monster. Who is that person there? Don't tell that when you ask him who he is, he won't say that he's a fighter, he's a killer, he's a champion, he's going to win. No. When you see him and he was just like the interview you had, you tell that he's still living in his three bedroom apartment. A simple, easy going gentleman. It doesn't mean that he's having a multi multiple personality trait, but he has an avatar. His avatar depends on the situation, and that person comes out. When he's with his mom, he won't be the same person he is when he's with his family. When I'm with my wife, I'm not the same person when I'm with my boys. Neither am I the same person when I'm coaching a client. And by the time we bring out all these different perspectives of life together, and you look at it from the end game, you now realize who you really are. And that's why I say strip off all the labels. Like you mentioned in the, in the chat room, strip off all the labels. Strip off all the accolades. Strip off all the recognition. 
it now comes back to the essence of you. When you are 10 years old, and when you're 20 years old, when you're 30, when you're 40, and then when you're 50, you are totally different persons. You are evolving per time. So who are you at the core will not determine how you evolve. Mm -hmm. If you oh, if you value yourself properly, then right. you now understand who you really are at the core. And that comes back to some basics. Mm -hmm. Understand your beliefs, your values, your core values, what guides you, what are your guiding principles. Right. Oh, and when you put all these things together, it comes oh. back and then removes other multiple personalities and you know exactly who you are. Right? So I hope that answers it. I see in the chat room, I have Dr. Mercy. Yes, she said there's something, a concept called being a polymath. Yes, you can have expertise, be more than one thing or in more. Thank you very much. She just got it right. That's exactly what I'm talking about. By the core, who is the person at the core? You know who you are. You're not ashamed of who you are at the end of the day. But when you're a professional, you're a professional. But you don't define yourself as a doctor when you're in the hospital. Then there's a doctor in the house when you're dealing with your husband or your wife. You don't define yourself as a doctor when you're watching a basketball match. And neither will you define yourself as a doctor when you're talking to your child. Once you're a doctor, yes, you're in a professional environment. And when you come back home, you're the husband or the wife. When you're an engineer, same thing. It's just like you have the octopus. When the octopus is on stage, you know who the octopus is. When some of family takes over, you know some of family has taken over. And same thing, when the coach in him comes out, the coach has come out. And that's just who we are. But if, if you don't know your essence, who are you really? Who are you? All right? Come on, I'll be able to answer that for you. Yes, thank you very much, sure. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. I think that also borders on everyone here. All right. And that comes back to the basics. You know, when you find who you are, when you can discover who you are, right, you have this sense of freedom. You become light. You're not bothered about the external factors, what anybody thinks about you, what anybody feels, because you're living your best life now. And that's why I recommended that book by Eckhart Tolle. You know, there are other ones that also takes you a step further, you know, into what the future is like. Who would have lived for a long, for long periods of time? The oh, Centurions. Right. Okay, like this other book, Ikigai, to the same thing. So there's a lot we can actually learn, but at the core, you know, once you find out who you are, you're not really bothered about how people feel. Somebody will do something wrong to you today, but you'll still be nice to the person because your value is not revenge, it's not vengeance. Yeah. Somebody may think they are taking a fast one on you. Don't smile over it. You shrug it off. You move, but you have learned. You know? And that is where you define who you are. Thank you so much, sir. Thank yeah, you, thank so, you so, much. so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. So I'm sure I, some of I'm, us will still have some comments or questions, but we can take that in the in the WhatsApp group. Mr. Rewa is there with us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Sorry, Thank quick you. one. I didn't see the virtual handshake, the virtual claps going on. What's going on? The virtual, make some noise, please. Make right some then. noise. Make some <laughs> noise. Where the virtual handshakes, the virtual claps, the emojis okay. and all that. So let's not do that. Okay. Still here. Okay. Okay. Um, Stella is saying we can skip the break. So, Tega, are you ready for us? Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so, so much. That first question you asked about 40 years from now, what was it going to be? It had me thinking a lot. So thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much, my president. Always good to serve. Thank you. All right. So Tega is up next. Tega, are you here? Hello, my VP. Tega. Tega. Stella, where is Tega? Tega is up next. I I'm am trying. here. Okay. Okay, you are here. <laughs> All right. So I'll briefly um, read Tega's um, profile. For those who do not know, Tega is the VP of the Octopus Speakers uh, Pool. So I'll briefly take her 
profile and then she'll hit the ground running. So meet our second speaker, Tega Omogo. She is a visionary who is extremely passionate about the next generation and has a burning passion for behavioral change. He is an author, an LLP practitioner, a seasoned trainer, a prolific communications expert, a public speaker, a positive psychology practitioner, an anger management and an emotional intelligence certified coach, a substance abuse counselor, an interventionist, a certified mental health and addiction therapist, a trauma-informed counselor, and teens mentor who uses her past experiences to help mold every youth she comes in contact with so they don't tell the past she did. Tega is a project coordinator of Back to Light Foundation, which is aimed at helping drug victims, drug use victims go from active addiction to sobriety alongside, alongside health experts to sanitize the environment one youth at a time. She is also the lead coach of Tega Omogo Consults, which is an organization she uses to, co to coach, counsel, and teach life skills that help promote their output in life. Tega is a trained United Nations on drugs and crime substance abuse educator, a member of International Society of Substance Use Professional ISSUP Nigerian Chapter, Communi Community Intervention Network for Drug CIND Nigerian Chapter. She serves as a volunteer counselor with the Nigerian Dr Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. Tega is a value-adding enthusiast, a value, Tega, a value-adding <laughs> evidence in her daily life as she teaches soft skills to navigate through challenges. She has attended several trainings and her certification from institutions on mental health, addiction, counseling, and leadership, including Oral Roberts University, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the John Maxwell team. She organizes school and community outreaches for educating, sensitization, and empowerment for after-school life in the FCT. She believes that the youth is the stronger resource of a nation, and education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Tega has spoken on many platforms like the 2019 FIDA African Regional Congress, including being interviewed on various television stations internationally and nationally. She's also a business owner and lives in the city of Abuja. She is happily married and, and, is, and they are blessed with an adorable son. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's make welcome with a resounding sound of a round of applause, Tega Omogo. Tega, you have the floor. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. President, good evening, ma'am. Hello everyone, good to be here. Um, it looks like I can't share my screen. If if I can be enabled to allow to share my screen or should I send a slide to Circa so that they can share for me? I'll, I'll prefer that actually. Okay, send it to me on WhatsApp. Huh? Okay, okay, fantastic. I love it. Good evening everyone, it's so good to be here. Um, Saka is home for me. Like I always say, when it was soccer, it was home for me. It's still home for me. If they like, they want to get rid of me, they will, it will be very difficult. So I wish there are people here who have been, if you're new to this space, I will tell you very quickly that you are in the right place because first of all, this is where my life started. Kuchisala, have you seen it? Not yet, ma. I'm still waiting. Okay. I'll send it now.
Okay, you can go on, ma. While okay. I um, process it. Okay, yes, I got it now. Okay. So hello everyone, good evening once again. It was such an amazing session. I loved your session, Ra. I loved even the name, I really loved it. Thank you everyone for having me. And I'm talking today about habits and changes. As a substance use recovery counselor and coach, one of the things that um, I do is help people change this empowering habits. It's, um, it's very important in the line of work. It's pivotal to behavioral change. And most people think that because they don't drink or they don't smoke or use substance, they're all right. But however, many of us have habits that are disempowering. Even if they're not so disempowering, it's important that we learn how to cultivate empowering habits. So we're talking about habits and changes today. Success is the product of daily habits, not once in a lifetime transformation. Some people will say, I'm waiting for Monday so that I would just start. And that Monday, I will not eat for one year, just so that I would lose this weight. If I just eat, I just decide I will stab myself. Or if I decide that today, I will just make the large change. Unfortunately, that's not how it is. The success that you need in changing habits has to be daily efforts. It's not one time. It has to be daily. And whatever happens that is that when we're trying to change our habits, many of us think that it's a linear it will be a linear transformation. We're thinking that, oh, when I start, let's, let me keep, I'm going to keep using diet because I mean, many of us always have, especially when you get to 40, they say, wait, before you're 40, you take, your body takes care of you. The moment you turn 40, hello, you have to start taking care of that body. And so many of us have not formed the habits of, you know, healthy habits in the beginning. And so later we're not start, we start rushing around and seeing how we want to quickly catch up with stuff, but we're not patient enough. So what are habits? Habits you, are actually, yeah. Can you see your slides now? Yes, I can. Okay. You are on introduction. So please go to the next slide. What are habits? Okay. So habits are a usual predictable way of behaving. A usual predictable way of behaving. Some people will do something and say, that's how she does. I know people that will wake up in the morning and the first thing they do is grab a cup of coffee. And maybe they have, um, they, they know where everything is kept. The coffee maker is there, the hot water is there, the mug is beside it, everything. So even their house partners know that this is, they wake up in the morning and the first thing they want is a cup of coffee. So they will arrange everything for them like that. Knowing that even if they sleep, walk, they will get to. Only some people have it in the morning. They will get coffee. So they would just automatically know that, oh, that's where they are going to go to. So habits are a usual predictable way of behaving. I suddenly can't hear myself. I can hear you. Please continue. So how are habits formed? Many people will say that it takes 21 days to form a habit. How long do you know that it takes to form a habit? Some people say 21 days, and then some people will say it takes 90 days to break it, but it takes 21 days to form it. So it's, um, and all of those things. See, when you repeat an activity long enough, your brain makes changes to become more efficient at that activity. And so you do it repeatedly and enough time for it to become automatic. That is how habits are formed. It is not in the length of time. That 21 days and that 90 days is actually an estimation. It can be different for different people. It varies. That's why some people would exercise for a long time. They say they've done 21 days. Oh, I formed the habit. That means I can never stop exercising. For one day, you stop exercising maybe after one year and you start to eat uncontrollably you pile up all the weight again it doesn't mean that you would, because you have started exercising for 21 days for the rest of your life you have formed the habit no it when you repeat an activity long enough repeatedly enough times your brain makes changes to make it more make you more efficient at it so your brain gives room for you to keep doing it it is formed by means of creating feedback loops so how do you cultivate positive habits? 
when you start any progress in life, like I was saying earlier, we expect it to go, next slide, please. We expect it to go, you know, linear, almost immediately. When you, you exercise today, you eat right today, we expect to lose two kilograms tomorrow. How many people, if, you, if you're in the chat room and you've ever tried to lose one kilogram and it dropped off in one day, please put one in the chat room. Let me know that you are alien. Because what I know is some people will tell you that it takes them so long a time, maybe up to four or five days to lose one kilogram, one kilo. Meanwhile, it takes maybe one day or two to pile two kilograms on. So it's not linear. Small changes are not noticeable, especially in the beginning. This is where most people now give up and fall back into their old disempowering behavior. That's why they say that by January 12th, it's called World Quitters Day. January 12th, not even up to two weeks, people have already given up on all their new resolutions. They have decided that, you know what, I fart, I fart, I don't kill anybody. Because they did not see the small changes. However, maybe it's even um, 0 0.5 kilograms that you actually lost the first day. But when you add another 0 0.5, it becomes one. What happens is that it's compounding. And anything that compounds is delayed. So patience is actually a virtue when you are actually doing anything that needs more changes. You need to be patient. That place where people lose it, which is the part where you don't see any change. And then you just think, well, it's not, it's not, it's not such a big deal. It's not working. And then you abandon it. That's what they call the valley of disappointment. And that's where many people actually stop. Meanwhile, if you just go a little further, just a little, not even as much effort as you put before, just a little more effort, you will see that there's actually visible change. That's why they tell people, don't try close, don't um, climb the scale, because if you do that, you get discouraged. That is the value of disappointment. Instead, keep going. At some point, your clothes will start to tell. Then other people will start to see before you start to notice that, oh, wow, this is actually happening. So take time when you are doing this. Be patient with yourself. Very important. Now, there are three um, layers to behavioral change. And that is identity, the process, and the outcomes. However, most of us focus on the outcomes because we're, we, because we're thinking well, it was such in a hurry to see the end game. This is what I, I, I want to do. I want to lose 10 kilo. Oh, I'm going for a party. Oh, December, I'm looking for a summer body. So I want to lose all the weight. Meanwhile, that will actually wear you out. What you actually should be focusing on is who you become and what you become. That is, you focus on being a writer instead of the book. Because if you put all your energy on only the book, it's only that book that you're actually focusing on. It doesn't actually make you who you are. And our identity is very important. So let's talk about the identity first. The basic idea is that the beliefs that you have about yourself can drive your long-term behavior. I always say this, that the beliefs about you are also your self-image. And honestly, no one can outperform their self-image. And you're, if you do not think peaceably about yourself, you are not going to behave peaceably with yourself. So if you do not shift your underlying identity, then it's hard to stick with long-term changes. So in these three layers, a change in your outcome, a change in your processes, or a change in your identity, stop focusing on the outcomes, like I said. Become, be, focus on the person you will become at the end of the time. Most people will say, like, you want to become like the octopus. Uh, calm down. Which Sam didn't start today. He didn't start today. You just say, no, I started today. And then, last, last, don't worry. Every, everybody, before you know it, I'm going to be having communities, 10 communities, calm down already. You have to go through the process. The root of behavioral change and building better habits is your identity. Each action you perform is driven by fundamental beliefs that are possible. So if you change your identity, which is your self-image, the type of person that you believe that you are, then it's easier for you to change your actions. If you believe that you are a writer, you would actually have to start to behave like a writer. You would wake up early. You would take advantage of the quiet times in the morning. And then guess what? When you like how it is happening to you, 
you begin to see the kind of person that you are, it's easier to now tell yourself, I need to wake up earlier to get to work and do these things. So this brings me to an important question. How is our identity formed? Your identity emerges out of your habits. Because many of us are actually not born with preset, with, um, preset beliefs. Every belief, including the ones you think about yourself, is learned and is conditioned through experience. So when you make your bed every day, you now start to embody the, 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 the identity of an organized person. When you write each day, you embody the identity of a creative person. When you exercise each day, you embody the identity of an athletic person. So the more you repeat a behavior, the more you reinforce the identity associated with that behavior. And it is what actually helps you because it's who you now become. It's not necessarily the outcome. So whatever your identity is right now, you only believe it because you have proof of it. Like when people will say that, oh, um, they go to church every day for 20 years. It does not mean that it is who you have now become as a person of that goes to church every, every, every Sunday. Not necessarily that you become a pastor. It is the person that is organized, the person that is focused on, you know, their religion and all of that. It is evidence that you're religious. It doesn't necessarily mean that if you, if there is no, some people now, if they leave the country and go to another country to stay, for instance, if it's someone that goes to, my sister went to Canada to stay with her daughter when she had a baby. And she's so Catholic that she goes for morning and evening mass every single day morning and evening mass, especially when she retired. She went to Canada to take care of her um, daughter's baby. When she got there, the, her daughter is living in the French-speaking area, and they do mass in French. My sister did not learn French in Nigeria, but she goes. She says she just follows. She knows the order of mass because she's been going to mass all her life, but she's in her 60s. So she just goes. She knows when they're kneeling. She knows when they're standing. She knows what they're saying. I'm like, man, you try, though. I will have... I would have just logged out and looked for how to go somewhere online to do that. But it's something that she's done over the time and it has created that identity in her. So your habits are not the only actions that influence your identity, but each experience in life actually modifies your self-image. So as you repeat those actions, the evidence accumulates and your self-image begins to change. So identity is very important. The process of building your habits is actually the process of becoming yourself. That's why you hear people say you are your habits. So it's a gradual evolution. You don't change by snapping your fingers. All those things they do on um, TikTok. Um, it's not true. It's TikTok. So you really need to know that we change day by day, bit by bit, habit by habit. I wrote yesterday when I was talking about um, advertising this, I said each action you take is a vote for the type of person that you wish to become. Every habit is a suggestion. So by the time you keep doing it and compounding it, guess what you're doing? You are reinforcing the evidence that this is who I am. So small habits can actually make a meaningful difference by providing evidence of a new identity. So if you are going to actually start exercising every day because you want to lose some weight, what happens is it is who you become at the end an athletic person, a healthy person, that is what we are after. Not that you have lost 20 kilo because there are people that don't even lose that much weight that much, that fast, but they actually become healthy. So don't focus on the outcome. Don't focus on the process. If you focus on the process, you wear yourself out. Where you focus is who you become at the end. So Q, we talked about it being a feedback loop. The key to creating habits that stick is to create feedback loops that are progressive. After a while, rewards become associated with the, the cue. This happens with drug use victims every time when I'm, I'm trying to explain to them how to change the habit. Let's say cue is like um, something like an activator or a trigger. You have a trigger. Let's say it's the cue. Let's use the phone, mobile phone for the sake of now. The phone beeps. The craving is you want to know who, 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 you know, who messaged fear of missing out. You want to quickly know who message. Even when you're sleeping with one eye, you will open the phone. You know you shouldn't be using your phone in a dark room because of how the, how the light affects your eyes. But you still open one eye and say, oh, I will see who it is. When you, what is the response from the queue? It's you pick your phone. What is the reward? You either solve the problem or you solve your, 
you satisfied the the craving to know who it was that messaged and think maybe it's something that you were missing out on. So that's how it happens. After a while, the rewards become very associated with the cues and you go from cue to reward very quickly, almost bypassing who messaged and picking the phone. Almost immediately is how it is with drug use victims. Once they see they, 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 they are triggered, if they don't take the time to delay or distract, they go from the cue to the response. And before you know it, they have the reward. So we always try to tell them to, you know, find time to be able to know that it's a craving and then leave it alone. What I do with people that even say it's a phone, mobile phone or something addiction, I tell them, keep your phone in another room. Because by the time you think of how you want to get up from your bed to go and pick it up from the other room, you would advise yourself and say, my dear, let me just lie down and sleep. I'll be all right. Nobody's dying right now. It's not an emergency. But if the phone rings a couple of times, you know that, okay, this person means business. You can go and pick the phone. So the more you repeat a habit, the stronger and the more automatic it becomes. The more you repeat this habit, the stronger and the more automatic it becomes. Cues can be anything. It can be a scent, sound, sight, location thing. So now I'm asking you, what cues are initiating your own loop? We all have cues initiating our loop. You need enough self-awareness to be able to know what cues are initiating your loop. You may not be a drug use victim, but we all know that there is something that we are all doing that we need to do better at. So determine what the rewards for your short-term change is. That's an exercise for you when you want to change your habit. What are the rewards for short-term change? What are the rewards for mid-term change? What are the rewards for a long-term change? Determine what they are. Keep them in your consciousness. It will help you. When the queue happens, will you take the old routes? that has always given you those results or will you try something else? Because if you never change what your response to your cue is, you will never get your desired result or reward. It has always been said that it's only a madman that will do the same thing over again and expect a different result. So will you take the old route that's always giving you those results or will you try something else that will take you closer to your desired result or reward? Our habits are so automatic, we don't even realize them. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Our habits are so automatic that we don't realize them. We have already done them. Then somebody will now tell you one thing that is that happens to me quite a lot. They say patterns don't lie. A person may lie, but your patterns don't lie. I never close doors. I didn't even realize it. My husband was one that brought my consciousness that do you know that you never close doors? Microwave done. If I finish with microwaving my food, I will leave it open. If I open the cupboard to take out something, I will leave it open. I won't shut it back. Even if I pass the door, I won't close it. I started noticing that I actually, I have the habit of leaving doors open. So I now started making conscious efforts to see that I'm doing. And I realized that I actually do that. And it was a shock. So you must first become aware to start to change them. Now I'm conscious and I try to change. Get a habit diary. And consciously write what you do from the moment you wake up to when you sleep. And based on whether it, it, it makes you the person you aspire to be, categorize each habit as positive, which is the plus sign, negative, which is the minus sign, and neutral, which is the equal sign. At this point, you're not even trying to change anything yet. What we're trying to do is actually just bring to your consciousness all the things that you have been doing unconsciously. Most failures are not actually out, out as a lack of, you know, lack of motivation when it comes to habits, but most times they're a lack of clarity. We're not clear, we're not aware, so we don't even know how to change. But when you become aware, it's easier for you to change them. One day I will stop this habit, it's easy to say, but it's too vague to gather any moss. So is it one day or is it day one for you? Are you saying one day I'm gonna lose this weight or is it where tomorrow morning we start, go to the market, buy the things you need to buy, is it day one or is it one day? Next slide, please. There are four laws to this. And number one is to make it obvious. Update your environment. Put your cues in strategic places. If you want to start a fit lifestyle, maybe you want to go to the gym first thing tomorrow morning or you want to work out. Put your shoes by the door. Put your dumbbell by the door. Put anything you need to put by the door. See them. Let them be obvious. 
it's very important. Update your environment. Let everything in your environment know that, okay, we're changing this. We want to stop eating junk food. Clear your fridge of junk food. Yes, I don't drink a mineral finish with bread. Yes, I agree with you, but you can mute, please. Thank you. So update your environment. Let everything in the house know. Tell everybody, this is what it is. Nobody bringing junk food to this house. Nobody doing this. Nobody doing that. You want to stop smoking. Get rid of the lighters. Get rid of the paraphernalia. Get rid of the friends. Make it obvious. Update your environment completely. It's hard to stick to positive habits in a negative environment. So to break your habits, you must make your cues invisible also. I'm telling you now to, to start a new habit, make it obvious. And to break a habit, make your cues invisible also. Next slide, please. What you need to do with, and under making it obvious is habit stacking. That's actually a form. Tie a desired habit to an existing habit. And it has to be something you automatically do without fail during the day. Like some people will say, when you wake up in the morning, as you brush, when you, as soon as you wake up in the morning, as you're brushing your teeth, you do some stretches. So tie it with something. And it has to be something that you absolutely have to do. Something that you do automatically without fail. Number two, next slide, make it attractive. When we expect to be rewarded, we take action. The more rewarding an action is, the more we are likely to repeat it until it registers in our subconscious and becomes second nature. It is the expectation of a rewarding experience that drives us to act. So make that thing you want to, that new thing you want to do, make it attractive. Temptation building is doing something you want to do with something you need to do. Like I said, wake up in the morning, you have to brush your teeth. As you're brushing your teeth, you stretch. Brushing your teeth, you need to do, unless you want to actually just make people pass out when you open your mouth. So when you're brushing your teeth, you can actually stretch. So that's what we call temptation building. Doing something you want to do with something that you need to do. Another thing you do in making it attractive is what we call group influencing. We are constantly wondering what people think of us. And then we alter our behavior based on the answer. So if you're influenced by people that we like, most times we're influenced by people that we like, we people that we're closest to, and people and people that are in groups that we belong to. Like if you want to read more, join a book club. If there's somebody you admire and the person is in a book club, but Sam is doing a reading thing tomorrow in Joss. If you want to read more, go there, be there, join that. If you want to increase your influence, join OSP. Come here and talk. Join OSP and speak about things um, and subjects that are important to you. So anything you want to do, make it attractive. And then the group influence thing, we're influenced by people that we like, people we're close to and groups that we belong to. The opposite side is if you want to break a habit also, you make it unattractive. Next slide. Make it easy. That's number three. If the gym is far from your house, you're most likely to struggle to be consistent. So instead, make it easy. Look for a gym close to your house or look for a gym close to your office. So on your way out of your office, you will go in and come out. Now, this thing reminds me of when I was trying to stop um, using uh, um, substance. I, I had tried to stay away from all the cues that there was. I tried, I threw all my paraphernalia away. And then guess what happened? I My office now moved location. Where we moved to, guess what happened to me? We, they now put our office right on top of a bar, Crystal Lounge in Wusetu. And then my life was over after that. It made it easy for me to fall back into my behavior. It made it easy for me to relapse. So reduce friction related to good habits and increase fr friction related to bad habits. Make it easy. If you really want to change your habits, you can also use the two-minute rule. If you want to read a book, instead of saying, oh, today I'm going to read 30 pages, then you won't read again for one year. Why don't you just read one page and then close it? Tomorrow, take it again, read one page and close it. So that's using the two-minute rule. Just use two minutes and then you gradually build up as you go. If you see that you've done one page, you think you want to do two more pages, you add two more pages, then stop. Tomorrow, you read the same three pages, then add one more page. Before you know it, you will have built up to reading one book in a month. 
There is no need for you to say you want to compound. Don't forget what I said. Do it gradually. Build it gradually. Make it satisfying. Next slide. When you experience pleasure, your brain learns that the behavior is worth remembering and worth repeating. This is why people actually use drugs. Because they experience pleasure. They now think is worth remembering and worth repeating. So what you need to do is now look at the long-term. Remember when I talked about long-term rewards? What are the rewards long-term, short-term, and mid-term? So if you're going to change your habit, what is the reward? I felt good when I went to exercise. There was no substance in my system. I had clarity of mind. I was able to have conversations. And I mean, I'm able to have meaningful conversations with people. And they're looking at me and thinking, oh, she actually does make sense. Not the time when I was always high. And then people will be wondering, how did this happen to this young woman? It was worth remembering and it was worth repeating. So what is immediately rewarded is repeated. What is immediately punished is avoided. What is immediately rewarded is repeated. What is immediately punished is avoided. So new habits make it satisfying. Another thing we need to do is get a habit tracker or a calendar and mark up as you engage in your new habits. Most people just get a calendar and then they'll just be marking their eggs when they maybe they, they decide that I'm not going to eat any sugar in two weeks. When they've done day one, they'll mark. When they've done day two, they mark. So that's a calendar, a habit tracker. But try not to break the chain because if you break the chain, get right up immediately because the moment you miss twice in a row, you have already started to start a bad, bad habit. So get a calendar or a habit tracker and just mark, mark, mark and make sure to follow momentum. It's instead of not doing anything at all, it's better to do less. When I started trying to exercise every day, recently after I had my son and I put on quite a bit of weight, hormonal and changes and all, what I realized was I know that I should do 30 minutes in a day at least. But sometimes I'm so exhausted from work and caring for him and life in general. And then I'll start thinking, oh, man, I can't even exercise today. I will do tomorrow and I'll do 45 minutes. But I, when I started learning about habits and how it's, it's best to actually do this thing gradually, what I do is instead of doing 30 minutes, I will do 15 minutes. I'll tell myself, okay, just do 15 minutes. When I get into 15 minutes, guess what? My body actually now has the momentum to go up to the 30 minutes. So I always tell myself, I trick my brain into saying, take, I do 15 minutes. When I do 15 minutes, if I'm really tired, I stop. But many times I see that I have energy to actually go for that. So instead of not doing anything at all, when you want to change your new habit, do less or not do anything instead of not doing anything at all. Number two, get an accountability partner. And when you get that partner, please be honest with them. There's no point getting one if you're going to be lying to yourself and them. Lying to an accountability partner is as good as lying to yourself, really. So get one. And then get a habit contract. Tell the person, I'm going to do such and such. And if I don't do it, I will pay you 20K. When you know that in this economy, you have to pay somebody 20K for not doing something, you would do it. So get a habit contract and try to keep to it. It's only good for you. Be honest with yourself. If you don't change, nothing, absolutely nothing is going to change. If you think that you're going to be the same way and you will get a different result, it is a big lie. You must change for something to change. Thank you also very much. Do we have any questions? Thank you, Tega. Thank you so, so much. Habit diary. Never heard of that. Wow. I knew I was going to get something new in every session. Hmm. The first one, 40 years from now, was going to be. And now, habit diary. You know, the other time, I wanted to start doing planks. You know, so I got the schedule from someone on Instagram, and then I said, I set my alarm every morning, 6.20 a.m. I did the first few days since then. I need to start again. So I'll be marking my diary off. Thank yep. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I guess I guess not having the diary has not helped. Even though the alarm goes off, I, I still don't do anything about the planking. Thank you, Tega. Thank, thank you. you so much. Honestly, thank you. Thank you. Any questions, comments, contributions for Tega? 
Yes, great delivery. I appreciate your mastery of the subject, actually, Mr. Kola Taiwo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Any questions? Any comments? And then, Tega, I want to ask, um, uh, it's, it helps also to have an accountability partner in whatever you want to do, yes? Absolutely. It actually does help. It actually does help to have an accountability partner because it actually keeps you um, on your toes. Because most times when people don't know that you are doing something, it's easier for you to say, well, it's only me. I mean, nobody yeah. else knows what's going on. But when you have put it out there, you have to actually keep your word, especially if you're one of those that thinks that there is a need for you to be a person of integrity. Some people mm. don't have integrity. And you must first yeah. have integrity towards yourself for it to mean anything to anybody else. So it's very important, yes. Yes. In, 20, in 2015, when I had some health issues, I was, in 2015, towards the end of 2015, I suddenly couldn't feel the right side of my body. You know, I knew it was, yeah, maybe health issues, but I knew it was actually very stress-induced, stress-induced. So I decided to start exercising, cutting down on food, just taking my exercise and diet very seriously. But in my estate, I didn't, I didn't have an accountability partner. I didn't have anybody to be working with every morning because mm. I used to do 45 minutes to one hour, you know. And then if I have to be working and I'm not talking to someone, I, I used to be very discouraged until I got, I got myself an earpiece. So if, even if I'm working for two hours, I'm listening to music. So for me, that was some kind of um, accountab accountability partnership, if you can call it that. But then yeah. I got used to it to the point that even now, now if I don't have a piece, I can just do 45 minutes without talking to anybody. I'm just, you know, I'm just communing with myself and, and with my thoughts. So accountability partner helps. And it, yeah, thank you for confirming that. You know what also, something else that happens to people and exercises is something that I had to adopt myself. I just get, you know, when you have, thank God for YouTube where you can download messages. So when you have yeah. enough data, you just download something and then you put an earpiece in your ear. In the time you're using to walk around, you are learning something new. Yes. One. yes. And then two, if you don't even want to learn something new, let's say you're deciding that today I want to be irresponsible. Let me just, just call somebody. Have a conversation. Call somebody that's your friend. While you're having a conversation and you're just in and laughing, just be taking that walk. You will see mm. that in the, course exactly. of the con in the course of the exercise, you have chatted with your friend, you caught up with your friend, you caught up with your family member, and at the same time, you have to exercise. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Because when I, when I don't want to play music or listen to any message, I just call my dad because when I'm talking with my dad, two hours can pass and we are still talking. Fantastic. And then you so just by, time I, by time, I'm, by the time I'm, I'm, I realize what I'm, what's going on, one hour has passed and I say, Daddy, please, let's talk later. That's my money work has ended. Fantastic. <laughs> it is a beautiful hack. Many people don't even know this. They'll just think, "Hi, man, to start exercising right now, like, I cannot walk around your house. If you don't have space, compound space, walk inside your house, walk in your living room, or you can walk around your streets, walk back and forth, back and Nigeria is yeah. not very safe as it used to be. Yeah. So you can walk around your house. But just yeah. anything you do, try to walk. I, like I said, before you're 40, your body takes care of you. Once you're 40, my dear, move your body. Move your body. Yes. Move your body, oh. move your body. Thank you so much, Sega. Thank you. Much, man. Thank you. It's always refreshing listening to you talk. Thank you so much. Any other questions? We can, um, while we wait for the next and the last person for tonight, we can take questions and then, Stella, can we take a five minute breather? Hello, Sigo. Thank you all so very much. I can see the um, feedback in the room. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the round of applause. So, can we take for five minutes? Yes, ma, we can. Okay, so play us some music while we take five minutes. So, we'll be back in five minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Tega, again. Thank you. Okay, somebody was asking to share my social media handle is just at Tega Morgan really on every social media platform.
when you succeed, there's no call you their own. Now because you don't date for the drug, get the fun you want to come when you never see you go day on the job, when you succeed, they don't call you their own. When they see such a day for the throne, they will call you their own. Okay, I guess um we'll start the la we'll take the last speaker now. Hello everyone, if you can hear me, please say hello or type something in the chat room. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the last speaker for tonight is Miss Nancy Okorodudo. Miss Nancy, are you in the are you with us here? Are you here? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. I'm here. Okay. So please. just stand by. Can you add this? Can you add this can to um, co-host? This... Okay, Stella, add, make her a co-host, please. Stella. Yes, ma'am. Done. Okay. Okay. So, Miss Nancy, um, you'll be up in two minutes. So stand by. Hello, everyone. Are we back? Are we back? We're on the last lap of this uh, relay race. 
started with Mr. Oriagba and uh, Ms. Tega. Now we are on to Ms. Okoro Dudu. Would, um, if you're here, say, just type hi in the chat room. Let me know how many we are back consciously, not just, uh, okay, yes, yes. I, I have a lot of people. Hi. All, all right, okay. Hello, Mkechi. <laughs> Hello, Taufik. Hello, Paula. Patience Dan Lame, Taufik Lawala Bilahi Bello, Nankus Luahas, Jacob Fenteng, Dr. Nina Jip Aha, Hawa Kwande, NSA from Scotland, Joy Nankus. Okay, everybody is here. Okay, so Ms. Bumi Okonoda, okay. Thank you, Tega. You're still here. Thank you, Princess Udwak. Mary Gloria, Cynthia, Osage, Kesaya. Okay, so we can hit the ground running. Ms. Okonoda, you have the floor, but before you take the stage, kindly allow me to read your profile briefly. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's meet the third speaker who goes by the name Nancy Okorodudu. She is a business registration consultant, social media ma management strategist, digital marketer and a business teacher for MSMEs. She is the lead consultant of Nanstev Consulting Limited and the founder of the Facebook community, Grow Your Business with Nanstev, with over 5,000 owners as members of the online community. She is also the lead instructor of the Social Media Management and Marketing Academy, SMMA, a 30-day online school created to help individuals, business owners, and corporate bodies to establish an online presence, increase visibility, 10 times their sales, and grow their business by leveraging social media. SMMA is also meant to equip young individuals with digital skills they can offer either as freelancers working remotely or as a full-time corporate job. She has facilitated business trainings like CAC registrations for small business owners with over 600K community members where she earned the name CAC Land Lady. Other trainings she has facilitated are nylon production trainings, how to position your business for funding opportunities, A to Z scrum registration, amongst others. And she has multiplied digital products and resources to her name. And she has multiple digital products and resources to her name. I beg your pardon. She's a, she's a seasoned media expert and has served as a journalist with Ray Power FM, Alagbado, Lagos. She was also a lecturer with the Department of Mass Communication at the Innovations Institute of Technology, Kaduna, before she resigned fully into business. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's make welcome Ms. Nancy Okorodudu, round of applause, please, in the chat room. Ms. Okorodudu, you have the floor. Please enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so so to be here today, the privilege to be on this platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you all hear me, please? Yes, you, you can, can hear, hear me. me. I can hear you. I can hear you. All right, all right, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, good evening once again from um the city, federal city capital territory, Abuja, Nigeria. Um, yes, we have introduced ourselves. I just want us to I just want to feel us in the house. So you tell me where you are dialing in from this time and what is the time of the day. For me, it's 2051, that's 851 p.m. So can you just in the chat box tell me where you are dialing in, tuning in from, and then what time is it? Can I see people? Am I with am I uh, am I audible? Yes, Enungu, yes, I can see. Tafik Lawa, yeah. You are all welcome. Yes, I can see. I can see you. I can see you. Welcome once again. As Riley introduced, my name is Nancy Okorodudu. And today I want to speak on the topic 
leveraging social media for brand visibility. Leveraging social media for brand visibility. Thank you. I can see your response and I'm happy to, um, to be here. So can you see my screen right now? I'm trying to set up my screen. Can you see it right now? Okay. All right. Leveraging social media for brand visibility. If you are ready to ride on with me, can you stay ready, please? Can can I see? Can I hear ready in ready. the house? Ready. If you are ready to ride ready. on with me. Right yes. Ready. Ready. yes. Yes, I Ready. can see Dr. Nina. I can see, yes, Nancy of Belete and yes, Tafik. You are all welcome. You are very much welcome. I'm so excited. So let's go. Let's appreciate the topic and let's try to see the component of the topic. In fact, when I was preparing this slide, I a friend of mine was listening to me and now said, this BB grammar you are speaking. And I said, what is big about this? And then I got to understand that we should take the subject matter, or we should take components of the subject matter so that all of us can be on the same page. Is that so? Are you with me? Do you agree that we should at least explain the components of the subject matter so that we can all be on the same page. Yes, someone is telling me, yeah, Kini uh, is telling me what you've done. Okay, so once again, I'm talking about leveraging social media for brand visibility. So the co first component here is leveraging. Leveraging from the word leverage. So can you suggest or can someone tell me what does it mean? What do you understand by the word leveraging? What do you understand by the word leveraging? Leveraging, what does it mean? How best do you understand it? I just want one or two people um, leveraging. Yes. Taking advantage. Thank you, Mary Gloria. Taking advantage, yes. That's it. Taking advantage of something. Yes, we are on the same page. Really, we are on the same page. Using, utilizing something. Patient says it. Joy, use it. Yes, yes. I think, yeah. So leveraging simply means that we are taking advantage of something. We are taking advantage. It's uh, especially maximum. We are maximizing something to uh, what is available, we are maximizing what is available to achieve a purpose. Leveraging means uh, the, 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 the process of what maximizing what is available. And in this case, we are talking about social media. So social media, is there a word that is uh, strange to us? Social media, is social media strange? Uh, I think it should be one of the most familiar words to all of us. So social media what is social media what is social media i i will try to or attempt to just take it from here but then as i take you will tell me which uh, what which is your preferred social media and which is your most active social media so just drop it in the in the in the comment section which is your preferred social media we all know that social media is a virtual platform that what that we use to what interact and communicate with friends, with our loved ones, with our enemies. Is the enemies here? Yeah? With everybody. Yes. So we social media is a platform, is a me is a is a medium, usually virtual. Yes. And so I would like you to mention your most preferred social media or your most active social media. Which where, where are you? Uh which of them? So give me the, I don't want to mention any. So give me, yes. Safik says WhatsApp and Facebook. Yes. So these are the examples of social media platforms. Yeah, WhatsApp. Mary Gloria, WhatsApp. 
Yes, more. I want to hear from us. What uh -uh. this WhatsApp is getting it all. You mean WhatsApp is so social like this? <laughs> WhatsApp? Yes. I'm just seeing WhatsApp. What happened to Instagram? What happens to Facebook? What's happening? What's up? YouTube. Wow. Someone says it's more active on YouTube. IG. Yes, yes, yes. So a lot of us uh, have a social media presence and we are active in one of the social media presence. Sorry, my slide is running off. Let me go back. So. Sorry, I think. So, all right, so we've talked about social media. So what is a brand or what's a brand? We are, talk don't forget, we are talking about leveraging social media for brand visibility. What do you understand by the word brand? What's a brand? Yes, Cynthia says she's more active on X. Okay, so we are going to the next, a brand. What do you think a brand is? Can we... Is it just me or I can't hear her? I think it's her network. I can't hear her either. No, so we can't hear her. Okay. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Nancy, you can. Are you back? Yes, sorry, I was actually logged off. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So I'm trying to get my slides back to okay. order. Yeah. <laughs> Who is Amy? She's not famous by order of network. She's well. Okay, so okay, so, so far. all right. No, go ahead, just give me a few minutes. Let me just okay, yeah. So, so far, Nancy has made us know that um, brand is a summation of your business image and identity, is what a company represents, is your business identity, is a unique identifiable symbol. 
yes, that represents a business and it is, it's the, the recurring thing is identity and what you represent. And she has asked us um, what social media platforms we use. And uh, people have said public megaphone, WhatsApp and Facebook. Yeah, WhatsApp. I heard her saying, oh, WhatsApp. Oh yes, WhatsApp. More, if on a scale of one to 10, I get my clients eight over 10, eight out of 10 on WhatsApp. My WhatsApp status is actively active. And then someone mentioned, I. YouTube, Instagram, Instagram, WhatsApp, and LinkedIn. Yes, LinkedIn is another good place that is uh, people are leveraging for their business visibility. Okay. So Nancy, are you ready for us? Yes, I, I am. Can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. I can okay. hear you. I can see your slides yeah. as well. You can see my screen. Yes, I can. Right. I, can I apologize for the... Um, interruption so where were we we're talking about what a brand is right yes and then and then a whole lot of yes the summation of your business image and identity yes so a brand is um your business identity but is brand limited to business is brand limited to business yes so um kezia said Brand is a unique identifiable symbol that represents a business, yes? Brand is your identity, yeah, Cynthia. Thank you very much, you're all correct. Brand has to do with what your, uh, a unique way we can identify it, your identity or your, yes, your personal uh, or your business or your, your products or your organization or even yourself. You can be a brand. You, an individual, can be a brand. Once there is, there's a particular pattern or it's, it, it, it has an ideology he's trying to promote, it can actually be a brand on its so, own. So when we are talking about leveraging social media for brand visibility, let's not limit our scope to businesses on, on, only. Someone will say, I do not have a business, so this doesn't concern me. No, you can be a brand. You can be, you can actually promote your identity. You say so. Hello, are you with me? Can you all hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay, okay. So lastly, visibility. Visibility, quickly, what is visibility or what do you understand by visibility? What does visibility mean in your own terms? Please, Madam Bolati, you mute your mic. Thank you, Dr. Nina. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Abdullahi Bello. Yes. Can we share? Visibility, someone says, patient says, access. Wow, access. How do we take advantage of social media like Facebook, Instagram, IG for our what business um, visibility? So visibility, someone say access. Yes, visibility could mean, especially with regards to, yes, mama, president says, be seen. Dr. Dina says, be noticed and seen. So how can we take advantage of social media for our brand and for our uh, for us as individuals to be seen, to be heard? So this is what visibility means, uh, me taking measures of how many people can see your products, see your offers, and see your content. So. All what we have said or what we have put together in layer terms or trying to get a, um, capture the whole topic is how individuals and businesses can let a lot of people know about their identity, their ideologies, their products or services by using platforms like all what we mentioned and share posts and to share posts and information. So this is a wrap up of our what our topic means, how we can make more people 
to see our offers and our products. Sorry, I'm doing a rush and then we will take questions or uh, contributions later. All right, so let me um, share a little about my story, my social, I call it my social media story. Wow, did I begin to talk about social media or my experiences and my journey. All right, so in 20, in 2020, in 2020, yeah, 2020, I had a very um, traumatic experience. I gave birth to my third child, my third and my life, last child. Well, I have three boys. So I gave birth to my last child and it was a near death experience. And so in, that was in March uh, of um, year 2020. My son will be four years next month. And so mm -hmm. it was a near death experience. Coupled with that, um, after a week, the COVID lockdown happened. We barely even do the ceremony, the name it, because the lockdown um, happened and everywhere was locked down. All our businesses were locked up. I, I used to, I own a rental outfit up to now. I own an event and a rental outfit. That's what I've been working with for over 10 years. And then we had to lock all our shops down. And then thirdly, uh, just barely two months of my delivery, I lost my mom. I lost my mom. So you could imagine how traumatic 2020 was for me. And so in the midst of the lockdown, we're trying to, I was weak because I almost lost my life. I lost a lot of blood. It's a miracle I'm alive today. I almost, I, in fact, I had gone, but God gave me a second chance. And then I was weak at that time. I couldn't manage my business. Or, anyway, there was no even business to manage because everywhere was locked down. And then I was also thinking about my mom. My mom did my she 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 died at a at an age she was supposed to start enjoying the fruits of her labor. So it was traumatic for me. And then I was thinking about a lot of things. We were at home, everyone was at home. And then I began to think my mom would tell me that Nancy, because she was always coming to my shop. We we're all in Kaduna. I was always coming to my shop and tell me that Nancy, you are brilliant than this. You are more brilliant. Why do you want to remain uh, selling in the market, uh, can uh, renting canopy and chairs in the market? How about Nancy? We know you. Uh, I, I was one in the family that uh, my family had already had hope in me because of my academic performances and stuff like that. So it was, my mom was always coming and say, is this where you want, you just want to stay in this shop? And then, yes, for me, I was raising children and I was, at least I was having something to uh, manage at hand. I had three, I had three branches of my rental in Kaduna and then, so everything was, well, pretty okay. And then I was a part-time lecturer with the innovation. So it was like, well, well we can, we are not, we are just okay. You understand? So I began to think about these things. So I asked myself, so if I if I died, what would I what would have been what would they hear me of? What would they, would I have been known for and the rest? So is that how I just died like that? So my mom's thoughts were coming to play. And then because of idleness, I began to pay attention to social media. We had we just had social media to our or to us. And so I was watching, uh, going through Facebook especially, and I read a lot of things. I begin to take notice of how business owners were selling, buying, doing this. And then I begin to see influencers putting in a normal thing. And you see responses like, wow. You see responses like, wow, is this? Oh, thank you for sharing this. And I will be like, well, this is a normal thing. This is common sense. So why are people praising this lady? So it was it began to look like, oh, so this. Things that I know, these little things that I think they are normal, they are actually a wow to some people. And you know, so I, I begin to look at the trend, begin to look at people online, I begin to follow valuable people online. And then I was like, okay, these renters, what do we do? What do we do? And so for that one year, 2020 and 20, yes, 2021, I was nursing my child, I was quite weak. And so when my child was one year old and I, the next year when I clocked a, uh, when I was celebrating my birthday in March, in March, 2021, I decided, I said, come Nancy, you do not need to 
stay quiet. People need to hear you. People to, you need to know more about you. And so June 2021, July, 1st July 2021, uh, the post is still there on Facebook. I came out to write and said, I am no more keeping quiet. Going forward, my page or my platform will be to share interesting stories, interesting business ideas and family issues. And so I came out 1st July 2021 I made that bold step. But I knew if I make it, I will keep to it. So I made it and I had a lot of reaction. My friend was like, wow, we can't wait to see what's going to happen. And then, so July 2021, 1st July, I came online fully as one who wants to learn her voice. And so we did, we started it, writing stories per day, writing, making creative posts per day, value, giving value, talking to business owners on simple strategies and, and ideas because how I was able to scale my rental business and all things. So I begin to share, I begin to share my journey and people begin to, uh, begin to get responses, inbox, people asking for inspiration and the rest. And so I, I thought about it. I said, okay, why not move them to a, a group? Let me know that these are my audience. And so I created the group in 2022, the um, Grow Your Business. It was initially Grow Your Business. And then we started, we started sharing ideas and the group grew into over 5,000 people and we're sharing. And then again, I looked at it, I said, what do I do with this audience? I have an audience of business owners and then uh, what do I do with them? I began to think about offers and, and offers and services I can give to this set of people. And that is where we baited Nanstep Consulting Limited in 2022, baited Nanstep. Please, are you with me? Sorry, my story is boring, but I'm, 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 I'm rounding up right now. If you are with me, say I'm with you, please. We are with me, say I am with you. That was how we baited now step. Now step we started to uh to to begin to uh offer business because we discovered that people do, do want to start business, but they don't even know where to start. So we was we were like, I was like, what? So we begin to create service around startup, around how business can actually start up the processes. First process, write a business plan. Begin to consult for business, the right business plans for uh, help um, uh, our clients to write, prepare bankable business um, plans. And then, then we went into the next stage is CSE registration. And then we begin to provide the service of, I already have an accountant, the charter that's my husband is a... To begin to provide the service of CSC registration. So we begin to bring, and then I will stop here. Please, can you give, please? Yes, yes, yes. All right. To train people. I discovered that, okay, we want that people's business. People can actually do this. Their businesses themselves. They can do these little things. So begin the training arm. Um, begin to train people on how to register their business. We have courses on how to register their business themselves, their company, their angels, because it's actually really good. And then that is how we created services around NASTEP. And I tell you, NASTEP, we started in 2022 with zero Naira. We started with zero Naira. But right now, our work is we, we are we have run into multi we we are we are doing multi million. We did multi million in within the space of two or one yes, just a bit above one year. So that's my social media story. That's my social media story. Yes, thank you, thank you, Abdullahi. Thank you, patience. Yes, you are with me. My story is not boring, and my story is over. So I want to move to my next slide. So why social media? Why am I speaking about social media? Why do we leverage social media? So number one, well, the reason is there's the large audience advantage. There is the large audience advantage. If you can see this, please type large audience advantage. Please type it. Sorry, I'm giving, I'm stressing you, but I want to, I want you to be with me. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone, please. So 
type large audience advantage if you are with me. So, all right. So, social media as 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 we are right now, um, I I I I googled the people number of users on social media and found out that over half of the world is using one social media platform. Over fifty billion, over half of the world, over half. So you have the large audience advantage. You have access to people that cut it across geographics, that cut it across race. You just have access. The social media is just there. People staring at you. Let, let me tell you, we have we have we have registered um, Nigerians uh, or people business or Nigerians in diaspora or people who are abroad. Right, right here in Nigeria, from Abuja here, we have we have plants from Togo, we have plants from um, Canada, from from in from so many countries because of social media. People we never knew, people we never met, but they were able to trust us and gave us their money for our value. So you have the the large audience of, uh, advantage compared to other medium for you to go and uh, want to run an ad on radio you know what it means you know how much it will take to run a, an ad or radio on tv so social media the social media is, is with you yes so secondly i'm rushing because of my time second thank you very much nancy thank you Messi. thank you thank you sorry i stressed you people but please, thank you. All right. So we have the second, the cost effectiveness advantage. Uh, if there's a, if there's a, an English like this, please permit my social media English. Sorry. So we have the cost effectiveness advantage to set up a set social media page to begin to make organic um, um, visibility. It costs little or nothing. It costs little. Com as compared to other medium of, of gaining visibility. So it's cost effective. You do not need to, uh, I told you, we started and said with zero Naira and I'm, I am, I am, I am, I am serious about it. I think I was, I made my, I just made a flyer and I made it myself. I made my flyer myself and that's it. You understand? Then again, another reason you should think about social media is, it's easy to launch out, like how we say it's easy. Today you can wake up this night and say, hey, I'm coming up. I am coming up today and nothing is stopping me. And then we have the two-way communication advantage. It is only through social media that you can actually communicate with your audience and you can get immediate feedback. You can get immediate feedback from your audience as a brand. I'm talking about a brand now. One, you communicate with mass and you get feedback from there in the comment section, in the in your inbox, in everywhere you go. So it has the two-way communication advantage. And lastly, which I like more because I like money, it has the DBA advantage. DBA means the daily bank alerts, the daily bank alerts and automation advantage. What do I mean by daily bank alerts? With social media, it's easy to sell things, offers that you can receive earnings day by day. You can receive earnings, even if it's true, day by day. Since 2023, first, tw yeah, first tw January 2023, that I began to create courses, I have never ever gone a, gone a day without selling something. That is the power of social media because you begin to get access to more, more new, new audiences. Not like a market or not like a street where sometimes you may be limited. If you are in a corner, you'll be limited to your surrounding. You understand? But here you can activate your DBA by creating offers, creating courses that you can sell to the multiple people coming to your page. And then you have the automation advantage you have the automation advantage in the sense that you can automate your sales process you can automate everything and you can be sleeping and your money is dropping that is the sweet thing about selling online you can be sleeping you can sell your customers can receive their value they can begin to digest what you're giving to them and you are sleeping that is that is the beauty of social media that's a beauty of social media.
So I'm sorry, I'm rushing. Oh, I'm rushing. I'm rushing. So where do I begin from? Where do I begin from um, to begin to leverage social media? Where do I begin from? And I and, and look at my picture here. I just um, got this uh, picture. I said, imagine you are preparing to host a special guest in your house. What will you do? Imagine a friend of yours called you and said, see, guy, I'm coming to sleep in your, your house tomorrow and it's coming from far. What will you do? What will you do? What will you do? Sorry, I, I'm, in a, I'm rushing it. <laughs> yes. I said, imagine you are preparing to host a special guest in your house. What do you do to prepare for the guest, please? What do you do? Your so internet is connection is unstable. Can you still hear me, please? You can just drop an emoji if you can hear me. Drop an emoji if you can hear me. Any emoji of your choice, your choices em emoji. Please drop it, drop it, drop it. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Someone is hearing me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I see you, I see you. I see you, Ramatsu. I see you, Kolawale. All right, where are my students? If my student joined this, if you are in my community and you joined here tonight, please, can I hear see your hailings? I told you to come and support me. Did you call? If you are my student, please, can you just tell me hi, I'm behind you. Can you tell me hi, I'm behind you, so that let me not fall down. All right, but then I already have in-house people who are already supportive. So I, like I said, let's go back. Imagine you are preparing to host um, a special guest in your home. What will you do? What will you do? Can we just have two people share? What will you do when you are preparing to host a guest? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Taiwo. Thank you, uh, Nokia. Who is Nokia now? Yes. Okay, somebody is saying, can't hear me. Can any other person hear me? Yes, princess. Princess, thank you. Princess, thank you. Yes. Yes. I will clean the house. Asaf, thank you. I will clean the house. I will clean the house. Yes. I mean, look at Can you see my human hair trying to prepare for her special guest? I will clean the house. I will tidy the environment. I'll need to do what I need to stock the house with probably food and drinks so that my 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 guests will be entertained when they arrive. Yes, I will tidy the environment. All right, thank you very much. So this can be applied to how to begin on social your social media journey. So where can I begin from, I said? Number one, you need to create a social media strategy. You need to create a social media strategy, meaning you need to sit down and decide which social media is best for me. In this case, now it's your visitor. Your visitor has already settled that, that is coming. So let's assume you have settled the case of the social media strategy. Your visitor you are expecting has already told you, so you know your visitor. But as starting out to uh, maximize social media, you need to first create a social media strategy that can be born out of, look, you have to decide on who your audience is, where are they coming from, and where are they always gathered? That was which social media platform do they gather? That makes up your social media strategy. Thank you. Someone is saying prepare the me. You are coming to that. So secondly, secondly, somebody said you will clean the house. This is the stage where you create and optimize your social media pages to reflect your personal and business goals. When you come on Facebook, you see some people, you go to some people's timeline and you will see all manner of jargons. You will see they tag them and 99 others on all manner of rubbish. You see them, you see their, their social media handle is what? It is rough. So when you want to begin, what do you do? You begin to untag yourself from all this messiness. You begin to optimize your page to attract new visitors. Visitors can come and uh, can come and get something and see so and see an organized page because it is your home your social media handle it is your home and you should prepare that place as how you will prepare your place for a guest so you have to optimize it's called page optimization you have to optimize your page to receive new visitors and then somebody says it is prepare not can say prepare a special 
meal, a special meal. That means you have to put out valuable and engaging content to educate, to enlighten, to entertain your audience. This is what you have to do. You are feeding, you, you, will feed, you will prepare all this thing before they come. So that when they just see you somewhere and they say, who is this? When they land in your, your, in your home, they begin to see enough food and drinks to eat. They begin to, ah, where have you been? Have you ever gotten in the room? Where, where have you been? No, this way. Where haven't I known you? These are the strategies. You need to prepare your house. You need to load valuable and engaging content on your hand that people can come and peruse and know that they are at home. So you can see that is where to begin from. So let's give you tips to keep your audience engaged, tips to keep your audience engaged. So how do you keep, when they come, how do you keep your audience engaged? By number one, sharing your brand stories. You share your brand stories, you share your relatable stories. You know, social media is social. And then we have, there is a technique or there's a way to go about it. I see a lot of people make long posts and professional posts on some social media and they get one like or they get no like. Uh, you know, because people naturally uh, came to came online or came to social media to get entertained. And so if you come up with boring posts or boring lengthy stops, especially with, I'm talking about now, um, platforms like Facebook and then LinkedIn, uh, no, not LinkedIn, no, LinkedIn is for professionals. Platforms like Facebook, IG and rest, you have to cry in a way to share your brand stories, you share your experiences, how your brand started, where your brand is going, your relationship with uh, your relations with customers, your 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 processes and everything. You share them and you share relatable stories that people can know that it is a woman talking to me, not a not a a a a, 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 a something a statue. So you share relatable stories, and then one thing that people always do that when you make a post and you do not see low, you see low engagement because you do not always activate your call to action, your CTA. So whenever you make an, a post, you are to tell your audience what next to do. If you want them to engage, if you want them to uh, share, if you want them to like, if you want to channel them to a website, if you want them to buy, always include a call to action after every post. And then again, Again, it's okay to also share your vulnerability when um liberate, when you are working on social media. Yes, we have been told that we should look strong and look up and now. But it's socials and we uh, vulnerability is inevitable. So it's better we share that we are humans and then people can relate. You know, one thing about social media marketing or marketing in general that people are able, you are sharing content that people are able to relate they are to know you, they are to like you, and they are to trust you. We call it the KLT of marketing. People ought to know you, like you, and trust you. So you have to KLT your audience. And these are the processes to KLT them. So when you have KLT them, then you cannot give them anything and they will take it hook, line, and sing her. So also, you join forums and community around your niche and make valuable contributions. So when you make valuable contribution outside, in people's events, people will drag and follow you to your platform and they be, and, and you begin to get your own um, community. All right. So where are other leverages? I want to try to wrap up because of my time. Please tell me my time, my left time, please. Sorry. Uh, so that I can know what we are working with. Mm -hmm. So what are other areas in social media that we can leverage? We can leverage digital assets. We can leverage digital assets like professional blog. You can own a blog. I own a, one of the uh, a professional digital um, um, skills for uh, Digitech uh, blog. And it has helped me in my businesses. I see people from nowhere just come and say, see, I want to register my business. Or I want to register. Most people from abroad, they want to register their end. Geo, you understand, and then we just see highly optimized to what to this, and then we have digital products, create courses, ebooks, videos that you can to solve the prevailing uh, problems of your audience, 
And when they come to ask you a question, instead of to give them free advice, give them an offer, give them a product to solve their problem, create online community. I know in, in the OSP, we all already understand Coach Sam has hammered on building online community. I have a paid community on WhatsApp. I have, we have, and it has helped really. So you can leverage community building. You can also leverage influence some marketing, you know, you, you you meet up people who are ready in the space and have a lot of traction and you can leverage them to grow your audience and to make sales and to make more people to see your offers. And also you can leverage media, media buying. Media buying means using sponsored posts, sponsored ads uh, across all social media platforms. So these are the little ways. They are not inclusive. Uh, they are not all. They are just some ways you can some areas you can leverage social media so in conclusion in conclusion honestly i can speak on and on about the blessedness of social media i can speak because it changed my life it changed my finances it changed my perspective to life and sometimes people just wake up and call send me and say god we bless you. you don't know what you have done for me i see people telling me uh I can now feed my family. I see people telling me I can now make end meet and it is it is fulfilling. So social media is a modern day miracle. Creating opportunities for individual, small and medium um, scale businesses and then large corporation. Individual can express their, their uniqueness, their talent uh, to impact and inspire the world. People can now hear you. People can now hear your, your make and know your worth. You, more people can see who you are, can see your genuineness, and then at, at, at low cost or no cost at all. You understand? So it has helped them. It's also for individuals, it has created roles. It has created roles. Social media. Can we hear her? Yeah. Like she, okay. Uh -huh. Created roles, something to build their businesses. We now have media buyers. We now have con uh, uh, content creators. We now have media has created. We now have um, some of these roles to begin to build a career, bringing up as a result of social media. And then business owners and large corporations can reach a wider audience build brand community and enable brand loyalty by getting inter uh, by interacting and receiving feedback from their their clients so in a whole wrap with social media you can reach more people you have results to take you have results people your impact will show on people the results shows on people's life people's lives are transformed you are solving a problem so you are you can solve issues you have results to show and you can also have a deep pocket i mean you can be rich because of social media and so because we saw all these things uh we saw all this we saw all the makeup we saw all the advantages of social media now step as a brand created the social media management and marketing ag academy called the SMA. I call it the SMA. So it's um, a program that um, teaches people. It's a four-week online school that you learn the simple digital skills required to start and grow a profitable business using social media. So you learn a lot of tools how to optimize, how to create a social media strategy, how to optimize your page, how to react and post and make post, engaging posts on all pl platforms, how to automate your sales, how to do a lot of things that can make you thrive on social media. I don't want to spend much time on this. All right, all right. So, sorry, my screen. Then who is this program for? Business owners want to leverage social media to grow their business. Individual who wants to build a career around social media management and marketing, media and sales team of large corporations. These are the people that should join the program. And what's the nature of the program? It's a practical, it's a four weeks online programs 
program that uh, it's it we, we daily we teach practical lessons. Well, our lessons are already pre-recorded. You say it's a flexible class that you can set aside at least an hour in a day to take your lesson and then do your practicals and submit them. And then you do not need to have any previous experience of, uh, of anything to join the program. We have weekly li uh, live meetings for the four weeks. We have um, weekly live meetings that's every weekend to, um, to do a revision of what we've learned for the week. And then you can learn with either your phone or your computer. And at the end, you have a certificate of completion. And you can also join our pool if you want. That's if you want to build a career around social media. Look at the enrollment fee. I'm not going to put it here for long because this this is just for the badge. And with the increase in price, we may we are likely to um look at the uh, um, review the price. But then you, I will drop the link to more details about it i don't want to waste your time but then i just want to tell you that it is possible to come up social media and make impact out of it and make something tangible out of it and lastly i want to I'll drop the word with you that your normal can be somebody else wow your normal can be somebody else wow so you are not you are you can you you have a voice and that your voice needs to be heard. Somebody is waiting by the corner to learn from you. So even if you do not have a business, you should be able to have a voice that should be visible. So thank you very much. And then I will take um, um, questions for now. Thank you, thank you, thank wow, you. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you so much. My normal can be somebody else's wow. Can you imagine that? So, much. so, so much. I'm listening to you and I have like two ladies I would um, refer to you. They need to start doing something and then leverage social media as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Who has enjoyed Thank this session? You. Who could Thank feel you. her and who could feel the energy? She was speaking from the, you, center her, from the center of her being. You see that this is not just theory for her. She has done it and she knows it. Thank you, Thank you Ramatu. Thank you. Yeah. Thank it indeed. It's small, it's not small E for energy. E for energy, oh, man. Thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you. Any questions for her? Any comments? Any questions for her? Any comments before we call it a night and rest for tomorrow? Any question? Yes, amazing session. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I've never, I've never listened to you speak, Nancy, but and but I will say that this was good, very good, beautiful. Oh wow! Uh, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And I know the power of social media. I know the power of social media. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, if we, if we don't have any questions, or maybe you don't have anyone now, but if you come up, if you have any questions, I'm sure you can put it on the WhatsApp group for her to answer and take it up from there. She has shared her information with us. So I'm sure a lot of us will be interested to get in contact with her and take it from there. Thank you again. Yes, I could actually feel the passion. As she was speaking, I was like, man, this one is just, she, she's, she, she, this is her, it is, it is she. Do you understand? It's not something that somebody is just talking theory or having read a book. It's something she has done. That's how speaking should be. Thank you so much. Thank you. And COO, any other thing before we go? COO, are you here? I'm here, ma. No, none from me, ma. We should take a picture. Let's put on our, our videos and just take a picture. Still lawyer, snap us. Let's have our pictures. Let's just put our camera on briefly so that we can take picture if we don't mind. If we do not mind. I'm sure it's late. Some of us are already in bed. Or should we do the picture thing tomorrow? Stella, what do you think? We can do today and tomorrow. Yeah, so if we can put on our cameras, but you know, it's, al it's almost 10 and 
a lot of us. Okay, some cameras are on. So, ST Baby, do the honors for those whose cameras are on. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we're good. All right. Okay, thank you, everyone. Omelog, I see you. I see you. <laughs> Nancy, I see you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yekini, I see you. Taufik, I see you. I see also. We'll see tomorrow. Who is? Okay, Muhammad Lawan, I see you as well. I see you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So we'll see you tomorrow, 9 a.m. Tega, see you tomorrow. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know some people are in bed. In fact, I purposely just stayed up so that I will not enter sleeping mode.